he, he came in afterwards and he said something about well you know he basically said they were going to f croatia up of all teams that you if you have to win a match against them spain is about the last team you choose because you know if you overreach against spain they'll just cut you apart <laughs> Halfway through the group stage of World Cup 2022, and of the 32 teams that start the competition, 31 still have a chance of going through to the last 16. That could all change tonight with four time champions Germany facing elimination. Yesterday, Australia and Poland eked out victories. Messi magic revived Argentina, while Daniel McDonald saw more brilliance from Kylian Mbappe get them past Denmark. Daniel, you've seen France twice now. What's your verdict on, on them at this stage? Yeah, I mean, I think they're definitely, uh, I mean, again, uh, this whole thing about, you know, what for the, uh, the last five winners go out at the group stage? I mean, they've avoided that. Um, ah, they're very likely winners. Like, I mean, you know, you're making the point in the sort of piece I was just writing for the the Sunday Sunday Indo. Just, um, I mean, tournament in France are probably a different animal to, you know, the rest of the year France. You know, and and if you mm-hmm. think about it, like, I mean, they won 2018. 2020, they probably just switched off for a few minutes against Switzerland at 3-1 and, and sort of lost when they shouldn't have. And, you know, some people even felt at the end of that tournament they might have been the best side in it, even though they, you know, they went out when they did. And here they are now with all the problems they've had. Um, they can still... Yeah, they, they have enough in the bank. I mean, there's a bit of scoreboard journalism with it, right? I mean, like at one all, Braithwaite had a great chance and could have put Denmark to what Denmark didn't actually do a huge amount wrong. I was just making the point, like, you know, Denmark are probably the team that's, that Ireland would like to be, you know, like they played three at the back, um, you know, wing backs, uh, real sort of, uh, you know, they were incisive enough in terms of their attacking movements, like they made chances. Um, but it does help when you've got Ericsson and Heiberg as your deep line midfielders in terms of Absolutely, giving you that platform. Yeah. But like they, they actually, I mean, they gave it a right go. But I think it's more, it's probably the Mbappe factor in a way. Like we've probably, what we've seen in the Saturday games is you've seen Mbappe step up and you've seen Messi step up. But I know it's a bit like American sports sometimes where you like, you focus in on these stars, like the, the basketball stars, you know, no matter what happens, if LeBron's team wins or whoever it is, like they're the reason they won. But like that mm-hmm. actually has been the case um, in, in this instance here. And uh, Mbappe, I mean, like his record's obscene, really. Like, you know, for France, you know, whatever about all of his club stuff, which is a bit charmless in some ways, like 31 and 61. Like I, I was looking just, just roughly to see, like he's way ahead of what Ronaldo was at that age, and I know yeah. you might think he, you know, he's got explosive pace, like he, he could burn out, but you saw even the instinct for the second goal, like he just gets in yeah. where it hurts, and sort of it was a bit of a poacher's goal, and makes you think, you know, he can, he's evolving in some ways too, like the, he's not as if he's scoring world class goals, he's more so scoring really strikers goals, and I think that that's yeah, I- uh, that's encouraging. Yeah, I think that was the thing about that that, that tonight. We, you know, you associate him with a little bit like the first goal where he comes from a little bit deeper, lays it off, gets the layback. So he when he when he's running from deep, he either gets it and goes past the player in front of him into, into grass or else lays it off, gets it back as he did. But the anticipation, the strength, the movement to get to get around the fullback, the Danish fullback, peel himself off onto that side and get on the end of that cross, like it was about much more than just sheer pace and you know, if he's if he's adding that part to his game, like a lot a lot of players with Mbappe's pace tend to almost wait until their pace goes before they evolve their game. Mm. And he he seems to be. I mean, look, it's only it's one game, but there's been there's been a few instances in the, in the two games so far where he's doing things that, if you like, traditional proper centre forwards would do. While also been in in out on the wing terrorizing fullbacks, which traditional centre forwards don't do. Yeah, yeah, no, like definitely, and I mean, as I said, I thought Denmark in a way like they they, they didn't do a huge amount wrong in, in terms of how they tried to defend against them. Like you could see at times they had a little bit of a tactic that. You know, when say if Mbappe got in the ball deep, okay, the three centre halves would step off a small bit and like try and, you know, there was a lot of instances in the game where it was like him against three or four players and it was trying to cut off angles of attack and and it looked like they had a really structured game plan. Yet, I mean, and you would know this, or you know, people have played at a decent level. Like it's it's a sense of 
like what kills you is the the mental fatigue of trying to do that for 90 minutes and to be aware of him and like he just he just gets around the back at him and what wasn't on the face of it ostensibly the most dangerous situation in fact both of the goals that they probably defended more threatening situations better and they just got done like you know um in 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 these two little instances and this is the thing like you, you start to think about you know knockout football and um he, when he's in this sort of mood like he he really can like he can he can lift him over the line and as i said like you know defensively you know i mean Varane was taken off for Canate in the second half um you know they do obviously have a great squad like there was like they they, they give you know, denmark some encouragement and actually i think denmark are quite good i think they'll beat australia i really do um yeah. but um it, there is something about the fact now like they, they can recharge now france like their last game doesn't matter for them and they can just sort of rest up and they're really into the tournament now whereas other teams are dealing with stress now um they're not yeah and i think that puts them in a great place yeah. Yeah, I think I saw Denmark and uh, Tunisia was one of those games that, uh, or sorry, Australia and Tunisia, I should say, where it was it was the classic kind of World Cup game where, you know, if that game was on at any other point, it, it, you know, in time, that wasn't the World Cup, there's not a chance in hell you'd have watched it. But I did watch most of it. And <laughs> yeah, it 10 yeah. o'clock Irish time, and you kind of find just like, it was a, like the Tunisians were from very early on seemed quite irritated and it was it was in it was a narky kind of game and they kind of threw balls into the box australia headed it, headed it out it was a peculiar kind of goal but it was i mean there was a game the iran wales game i thought felt like a, a championship playoff game with a bit of quality in it i think the australia and tunisia felt like a league one playoff game hmm. and it, even though australia are second i mean look Australia would be delighted with the idea if you'd offered them, it's the old Mick McCarthy thing, you know, if you'd offered me this at the start, but Australia going into the Denmark game, they, they need a point, but it's, it's very difficult to see unless Denmark completely freeze that, that Denmark won't win that game and go through. No, it's a great place for them. I suppose uh, people like me have gone through phases maybe of early mornings will know that, you know, Australians are very strong on Saturday mornings early, like Irish time. That's their peak time. That's mm-hmm. where I've watched a lot of my A-League. I've even watched some of those players. Um, uh, they have a couple of A-League guys involved, quite a few actually. Um, so, I don't know, it's a familiar kickoff time for them. You know, that's it. It's like, what was the Steve Staunton thing? He was pilloried for back in the day. Was it we're, we're we're good in March or we're not good in March or I don't know there was some right, yeah, yeah. there was something like that you know Australia that ten a.m. morning kickoff Irish time you know it translates to night time back home when they when they do their business maybe their body clocks are like still in that mode I don't know if you saw the scenes in Australia by the way the um there was like uh, scenes of like because uh, it was an ideal like Saturday night um, mm-hmm. prime time game for them. Uh, they had huge crowds out in the streets, sort of like uh, fireworks and all sorts. The type of thing you would associate with a probably a more uh, a football nation that would be associated with being a little bit more hardcore. Um, but they clearly have mm-hmm. managed to sort of uh, capture the imagination in some way, uh, that team. And as you said, like they're probably just going to go out and make it bruising against Denmark, I think, you know, yeah. and, and, and see if they can see if they can hang in there. But um, I mean, Argentina, I suppose, was the. I, I, I sort of have a track record of like seeing Argentina win games after other games, like trying to get out of mm-hmm. the uh, the stadium 974 to get to the Metro to get back to, to back to my sort of a hotel direction to see uh, the Argentina game. Like the, it was tra- challenging, like the Metro queues at that 974, like it was properly sort of hundreds, thousands of people trying to get out of the stadium. And you have this scenario of like on the metro back in, uh, there was a couple of people ha- happened to have it on their phones. People like straining over their shoulders to watch it. Now, it doesn't sound like you can tell me more about that game than I can. Um, it doesn't sound like I missed a huge amount in the first half. And no, then, I, I was uh, just going to say you didn't miss much. Yeah, and then Very happened to get to back to my hotel for the second half thinking that um, I'd, I had it on the TV here. But it turns out that uh, only some games are on the TV here and some of them aren't. It's obviously a premium game. So to run around the corner to uh to what we would it's TGI Fridays as it is, which is a okay. TGI Fridays, the Doha branch. Sort of I was having a discussion with one of the other lads, it was like, I mean, thank God it's Fridays, right? That's what it is. I mean, it has different yes. connotations here, like, you know, 
Friday's a holy day and it's not necessarily all about God. So, um, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure how that works, but um, they did have the football on the screen and got to see the messy goal with a, like a huge cheer again from people, which I said, I haven't experienced that much in this competition, but Brazil and Argentina are like the people's champions to some degrees. Like you yeah. actually will, the thing about like football culture here, like it's a little bit different, like that you have a lot of people here you know, uh, it's been talked about like fans from say India or Bangladesh or you know other countries, and you, people, you might talk to them and say like, "What team do you support?" And they'll say, "Well, my teams are Brazil, Argentina, and France." You know, like, do you know what I mean? They they support everyone. Uh, they support the big names, and there was uh, quite the cheer. As much as 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 there's ever been a cheer, I would suggest in TJ Friday's Doha uh, when yeah. uh, Messi stuck it in the net. I suppose for Bob in the universal religion, it's sort of appropriate that it's probably only only visible in TGI Fridays. There yeah. wasn't much, there, there wasn't much uh, love lost in the game. It's in in among all these great stats that are on the FIFA website between you know possessions possessions gained and you know last third entries and all that sort of stuff. The basic one of fouls was was there, and I think at last I, I think I got the last count of it. There was thirty four fouls in the Argentina and Mexico game, which kind of tells you a lot hmm. about, you know, watching it. But by comparison, France and Denmark had 13 fouls. The game, England and USA, which was very, very stop start. It was a horrible game. It had 24 fouls. So there was another, you know, there's another half on top of that in the Argentina hmm. Mexico game. I mean, it start, they, they kind of brought out the worst of each other as they, as they kind of tend to do sometimes where like the first kind of minute there was, there was a, a Mexican, I didn't quite catch you either than where it was a Mexican player going through he he did this thing, you know, as all players do, put their arm across the opponent. The his arm hit the Argentina guy in the face. He went down like it was platoon. Then there was Argentina players saying sending off and all, and it just it just degenerated into a horrible game. Like there was two two cracking goals in it, um, and Argentina still with you know they they have their they have their destiny in their own hands. Thankfully yeah. for their sake, but they, they will. Probably need something out of Poland, out of the game against Poland, which I, I don't think is going to be easy for them. No, I mean, I listen. I mean, the Messi thing was genuine greatness. That was just a great moment, like to, to actually to, to deliver. And we've sort of touched on that earlier. Um, yeah, like the one thing I would say from what I saw, which was pretty much all of the second half, Argentina never looked in trouble once they scored. Now that could be, no. I mean, they, that could be about Mexican limitations as well too, and we'll see. But like they never looked remotely in trouble. Like they shut it out like really well. And I sort of it was one of those mm-hmm. games where you think okay, Argentina score like Mexico, it's going to open up a bit now. But it wasn't really the case. Like, but Argentina managed it well. And you're thinking, okay, they made what five changes. But and you're thinking, is this little bit of a panicky response to one your first defeat in whatever like 35, 36 games? But you, they looked like a team that once they got ahead, they were fine. Now, you're right about the Poland game. I mean, they definitely. Um, they definitely need a point. Like the goal difference could be pretty significant. Um, so that I mean, like that second goal gives them a, a little bit more of a breathing room in terms of scenarios. But I mean, I mean they could draw and Saudi beat mm-hmm. uh, Saudi beat Mexico and they're out. So like that's the yeah. thing. They, I mean Poland to me weren't um, weren't extremely impressive. I mean Saudi were battering them for spells at that very match. Good, yeah. You know, and and actually what I will say like I'm trying to go to Poland or Argentina. That's the game I've applied to go to. Um, but this is one of these things I'm not sure if it would be apparent at home I would say Mexico against Saudi Arabia will be the atmosphere of the group stages Mm -hmm. they're probably the two uh, loudest bunches of fans I know I go on about the Argentina and Brazil thing but that's probably enhanced by local support for them but of themselves in terms of what the noise they bring themselves I mean certainly the one thing I've learned in this competition uh, as we mentioned with a couple of journalists like who maybe cover more global stuff, you know, the that Saudi Arabia for all the issues with it, we know exactly what they are. Um mm-hmm. it does have a football fan culture in a way that Qatar doesn't. Like it actually has a mm-hmm. real, you know, genuine sort of hardcore football fans who don't need to be coached or trained or taught how to sing. Like they actually mm-hmm. are like it is a does have a history as a football country for all of its many ills that we're very much aware of. So like the Saudi fans are are, are the real deal in terms of like their football match goers and the Mexicans are as well. So that will be yeah. intense. I say most people won't even watch the game. I'd imagine it'll, the two screen option uh, or the cha- you know the, the the main channels will probably all be showing Poland and Argentina. But that will be an event. Mexico against Saudi, mm-hmm. and they've both got a chance. 
in their own mind. Yeah. I think if Argentina go through, they'll end up with France in the last 16, which would be Messi v Mbappe and well, Qatar. You know, well, but, if they, if they win. Right. Well, if they, yeah, well, no, if they win. They go through in second. If they go yeah, through, if they go in, through second, in second. Yeah, if they go through in second, which, which look, would look like their only route. But now, in reality, if they beat Poland and, um, and Saudi... I think their goal difference is going to be better than Saudi. Like, you know, they just have to sort of, yeah. you know, do, sort of do better than how Saudis do against Mexico. So they could well go in as top spot and avoid it. But we were all sort yeah. of dreaming of that France-Argentina around the 16 game. But it's probably, I don't know, it's, it's odds against it now. I think I still fancy them to beat Poland. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would obviously be a big hitter game. There's a big hitter game tonight as well. Spain and, and Germany. Germany kind of, on the on the brink, really, uh, depending on even allowing for Japan and Costa Rica tomorrow or this morning, where like it's very difficult to see a scenario where this time tomorrow we're not talking about Germany being out of the competition for I think the third major competition in the row where he wouldn't have made it out of group stages. Yeah, like I mean, I think I mean Germany probably one of the things they're praying for is uh, is Japan to somehow slip up against Costa Rica, which I would say is unlikely. Um, but then you do see, like you know, Iran conceded six, and they 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 bounce back. And sometimes you can make snap judgments on teams in a tournament. Like I suppose you think like Ireland got hammered by Belgium in twenty sixteen. It was grim, and they they responded and beat, albeit like a sort of a weakened Italy side. Like mm-hmm. I'm sure any team that gets beaten seven, like it's like in football, a team after a big defeat is dangerous. And like Japan yeah. are on a high, there could be like the Saudis, like you're at such a high. There's a risk of that come down off it. Um, and but even still, like even if if let's say even Japan drew, like Germany are still at a scenario where they they can't lose that against Spain. So I actually mm-hmm. think that the, the 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 result of that earlier game has an impact on the psychology of Germany going into the Spanish game. I think that's just something to bear in mind. I mean, if Japan win, like Germany are just in in nightmare territory. Germany have to beat Spain. Yeah, yeah. Germany have to beat Spain, and it's, that that just. Mm. You know, it, it just seems very, very uh, unlikely. Given it, it was such a, it was such a shock, and and the manner of the defeat as well, where you know it was a kind of a, it wasn't even where you could say it was a sucker punch. Like they were dominated by Japan in the second half, so it's it, it, you can't even chalk it down to a couple of individual errors or whatever. Like they did, they really, they didn't do enough to win the game at all. So like they're going into the game where of all teams, like if, of all teams that you, if you have to win a match against them. You know, Spain is about the last team you choose because you know if you overreach against Spain, they'll just cut you apart. So it's like it's it's a difficult it's a difficult scenario for them. We might just get into we might start there in terms of our predictions. Now, what what, yeah? Yeah. So like, what's Spain Germany? Let's start with the big one. Uh, Yeah, I. I mean, as I said, I think that the, the the earlier the earlier result kind of can impact the game in some way. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think I know what you're saying. Like it's it's hard to see Germany beating Spain, and I'm, I'm going to probably predict the one all. But it's like I suppose before the competition or a couple of months ago, the idea of Germany beating Spain wouldn't be a massive shock, right? Like you know, it's not like mm. Spain still aren't on the pedestal that we previously would have held them. It's just that they look so good in the tournament. They've got a great profile of younger players, and they look to have a lot of the ingredients. But they're not like proven, um, sort of like. Uh, sort of uh, habitual winners either so mm-hmm. like i think i don't know I, I can see it being a draw i can see it being a one-all draw and I, I said i don't know what what that result means like you know depending on what happens earlier in the day um but i can sort of see it being a one-all draw yeah i mean spain did thump germany 6-0 in the in the nations league a few years ago it's a, it's a long time ago now but I, yeah, I, I just find it hard to see beyond Spain this game. I mm. think I'd be going with Spain for Spain two two one. The earlier game though, I kind of I don't know what it is. It's something about the the Costa Rican uh, Japan game that I could just sort of I, I think I think Costa Rica might. It, it's it's a strange thing. I'm no expert on Costa Rican football, but no. if you were lining if you were lining up a game that Costa Rica were going to target, logically you'd be saying it's the game against Japan. So they may well have been, you know aiming at this game they wouldn't have planned to lose 7 nil to spain obviously but it's a sort of game they might aim at. i think they I, I think you could have a shock here i think i'm gonna go for 2-1 to costa rica oh wow okay well that gives me the leg room that gives me the leg room to go for a draw 
that gives me the leg room to go yeah. for like a a one all draw in that game. I just I don't know. I thought the Saudis might bounce to the horse racing terms. Like you know, you have a really good mm-hmm. one, then it's hard to follow it up. But I just wonder. Yeah, wonder could that be a one all as well? I'm going for one alls. I'm just an Irish football journalist. I, 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 I see that one alls. Our predictions, I think, were fairly decent yesterday, so we might keep that going. Yeah, hopefully. I think uh, Australia, Australia screwed us, but otherwise, I think we weren't bad. I don't think. Yeah, otherwise it was pretty good. Yeah, and score lines were okay too. Uh, Belgium, Morocco, Croatia, Canada. Um, Ooh, I'm going to Croatia, Canada. I think that's going to be a, mm-hmm. a a great game. Actually, I don't know if you're aware of some of the spice in this game, but uh, the Canadian coach John Herdman, after their game against um, uh, Belgium. He came in mm-hmm. afterwards and he said something about, well, you know, he was obviously hiding it. He basically said they were going to F Croatia up. Um, yeah. And I think that's exactly, he actually used the word F. It yeah, was, he, he, he did. He said it on the TV interview. It was, yeah. So, it was there's a, so one of the tabloid newspapers in Croatia basically has then posted like a, obviously a photoshopped fully nude picture of John Herdman uh, with various parts of him covered up, you know, saying something like, you know, show us, you know, show us where your mouth is now or something like it's uh okay. it's got quite uh personal in a way and like he was asked about it in the, in his pre-match and he was saying like oh, his wife doesn't recognize the picture that was in that paper so like it's 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 in croatia and canada like this is a massive uh this has become like a massive grudge game now it's the game i'm going to i'm looking forward to it because canada are just like have a go heroes you know um and I don't know if if they can match the level of performance they did against they produced against Belgium and the energy they produced in that game. Um, and Croatia, to me, against Morocco, they weren't incredibly impressive. Now it was an early morning game, and or it was the, the early game, and I think some of these early games are still quite uh, draining for players, maybe more so than the games later in the day. I can give them a little bit of a pass on it, um, but I, I'm I'm going to go for another draw there too. That could be like a I don't know. Canada is still haven't scored in the World Cup, but um, they create chances. Um, I'm going to go for another one all. I've got. I was going to just go two all, just so I didn't give the same result in the other games. But I'm going for one all in this one as well. Why not? Yeah, it's, sure. Why not as well? I think I'm going to go for it based on just based on the first game. I think a Canada two one win. Just okay. Yeah. Just for you know, I think it's it's a young hungry team against a team that might be just a bit past their best. So I go for that. And then Belgium Morocco. Belgium are again very unimpressive. I take. I could see another one nil Belgium in this unimpressive one nil. Yeah, it's, it's it's funny. Like Eden Hazard uh, and Kevin De Bruyne have both said uh, that their big chance was four years ago. They're pretty blunt. I think actually Hazard today just pointed out to me. You know, he, he was asked to assess their team, and he like he praised Courtois, and he he praised you know their their midfielders and their strikers, and made no reference to the defense at all. Um, which sort of suggests there might be some concerns there. Um, yeah, like Morocco, funny, like Morocco on paper have some good players, like playing at really good clubs. You know, um, you know they sort of like you you match them up against Croatia, and they actually they 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 compared reasonably well. They just maybe with so, a couple of the subs weren't in that bracket. So um, I'm going to go for two one to Belgium. Okay. Well, as I said, our predictions have been reasonable so far. So we'll we'll see again. We 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 will. Uh, we will eventually get to that uh, much much anticipated predictions table and see how we get on with it. But um, for now, Dan, thanks very much. Uh, that's been Indo World Cup and I made Nohara, and we'll be back tomorrow to talk again. Thanks. Bye.